This video will cover contingency tables. First, we will discuss the definition of a contingency table and then the steps for creating one. Finally, we will discuss chi-square distributions. In statistics, a contingency table is a type of table in a matrix format that displays the multivariate frequency distribution of variables. Contingency tables are heavily used in survey research, business intelligence, engineering, and scientific research. They provide a basic picture of the interrelation between two or more variables and can help find interactions. A contingency table is also referred to as a two-way frequency table. Here's an example. Given this table, can you calculate the following metrics? The number of males who are right-handed, the percent of males who are left-handed, whether more males are left-handed than females, or the percent of left-handed people who are females. In a table such as this, notice that there are no numerical values. The person ID is a numerical identifier, but the numbers are arbitrary, so there are no obvious calculations to perform. However, because each row represents one person, we can count the number of rows along each dimension, gender and dominant hand, to analyze how the dimensions are distributed. To create a contingency table, the first step is to aggregate the original data set along two dimensions, gender and handedness, and count the number of rows for each combination of values. Since there are two possible values for gender, male and female, and two possible values for dominant hand, left and right, there are four total possible combinations, male and right, male and left, female and right, and female and left. For each of these combinations, we count the number of rows that contain both values. At this point, we can extract information regarding the quantity of each combination, allowing us to answer basic questions such as, how many females are left-handed? And are there more males or females who are left-handed? Next, we perform a cross-tab on the result, moving the dominant hand to the horizontal axis. This will make interpretation of the results much easier and allow us to easily calculate totals along each dimension. There are other questions, however, that are harder to answer and these deal with the proportions of each combination. What proportion or percent of males are left-handed? And are a greater proportion of males left-handed than the proportion of females? For these questions, the proportion of gender, we need to divide the values in the cells by the totals along the gender axis, which in this case is the vertical axis. The resulting table, called a row conditional frequency table, will have 100% values in each cell in the total column, the cells for each row will account for all of the people within the category, male and female, of the gender dimension. The table can be easily read. 83% of males are right-handed, and only 8% of females are left-handed. But what if we want to know what percent of left-handed people are female? This is a different type of question, one that can be answered by dividing the original values of the cells by the totals along the dominant hand or horizontal axis of the contingency table. These are called column relative frequencies. Now the results can be interpreted into sentences by focusing on the columns in the contingency table. 49% of right-handed people are males. 31% of left-handed people are females, etc. But what if we want to answer questions about how prevalent each separate combination is among all people in this data set? For instance, what percent of the people are left-handed males? For that, we divide the original values by the total number of rows in the dataset. For our example, this makes for an easy calculation, since there were 100 rows. With this table, we can answer many basic questions about the dataset, including what percent of the people in the dataset are right-handed? What percent of the people in the dataset are female? What percent of the people in the dataset are left-handed females? And so forth. Note that the language used, what percent of people in the dataset, is different from the easier to say, what percent of people. This is because the dataset being used is a sample of the population, and to infer the trends about the population, we'll need to use a statistical technique. For a contingency table, a chi-square distribution can be used to make such an inference. To do so, however, assumes that the sample you are using was acquired from the population randomly. The chi-square distribution compares the actual values to the expected values to determine if the actual numbers that were observed and recorded in the dataset are due to chance, or if there's a difference between the two variables that cannot be explained by chance. In this example, we want to determine if the observed difference in the proportion of females who are left-handed is really smaller than the proportion of males who are left-handed, 
or if that observation could be due to chance. In other words, we want to know if the dominant hand is dependent on gender. To calculate the expected values for each cell, multiply the relative horizontal and vertical dimension totals and divide by the number of total observations. In this example, to calculate the expected value for right-handed males, multiply 52, the total number of males, by 87, the total number of right-handed people, and divide by 100, the total number of people. Similar calculations are done for each cell. Once the expected values have been computed, the chi-square test can be run. In Excel, the chi-square test function uses the actual table and expected table as inputs to calculate the p-value. This p-value is the probability that these results did not occur due to chance. A common way to evaluate the p-value is to compare it to 0.05. If the p-value is less than 0.05, we say there is an association between the two variables that is statistically significant. In this example, our p-value is 0.18, which is greater than 0.05, so we conclude that the dominant hand variable is independent of gender. If there is an association between two variables, completing the calculation for the chi-square test statistic can be used to find which values contribute the most to the association. This can be calculated using this formula. For each cell, subtract the expected value from the observed and square the result. Then divide the answer by the expected value. Each of these results is summed, indicated by the Greek letter sigma. This value is compared to the chi-square distribution. Within each cell, the calculation describes how far the actual value is from the expected value. In this example, the calculations for left-handed people are much greater than those for right-handed people. These cells have the greatest impact on the potential association between the two variables. Summing those values results in chi-square test statistic of 1.78. Using this value in a chi-square distribution, along with the degrees of freedom based on the number of values for each variable, and a significance level, such as 0.05, is how the p-value is obtained. This concludes our video on contingency tables. Today we defined contingency tables, and then we discussed the steps for creating one, and finally we covered chi-square distributions.